Hey, do you know there's a 76% chance that you've been eating your chocolate buddy wrong? Yeah, those glossy foil-wrapped Easter treats aren't just simple chocolate pours. They're engineering marvels that take serious science to perfect. So today we're going to step or hop inside the factory to reveal the secrets behind your favorite Easter candy. And believe me, it is way cooler than you think. Now, before we dive into the manufacturing process, let's quickly understand why we're even making chocolate bunnies in the first place. These sweet treats trace back to 19th century Germany, where rabbits were already deeply woven into Easter traditions as symbols of fertility and spring renewal. Now, German chocolatiers saw an opportunity to transform this cultural symbol into something delicious, and the idea quickly spread. When German immigrants brought this tradition to America, it exploded in popularity. In 1890, Pennsylvania shop owner Robert Strohecker created a massive five-foot chocolate rabbit as a publicity stunt, and it worked perfectly. And by the early 1900s, what started as handcrafted artisanal pieces evolved into mass production, leading to the development of specialized machinery and techniques we still use today, albeit with modern improvements. Now let's start where all great chocolate begins, in massive climate-controlled storage facilities. These aren't your ordinary warehouse rooms. Inside, you're going to find huge blocks of specialized chocolate called curvature. Now this isn't like the baking chocolate that you find at your local store. It's specially formulated with precise amounts of cocoa butter to ensure that it flows and sets exactly right. Now first, these massive blocks need to be broken down. The factory uses industrial grinders that chunk these blocks into uniform pieces. You might wonder why they don't just throw the whole block in there to melt. Well, having consistent sized pieces is crucial for the next step, melting. So now this is where things get really precise. Those melting tanks you see, yet yeah, they're holding hundreds of pounds of chocolate, each maintained at an exact temperature. Dark chocolate has to hit 120 degrees Fahrenheit, milk chocolate to 115, and white chocolate is a little bit lower at 110. But here's the thing, just melting chocolate isn't enough. This is where tempering comes in, and honestly, it's one of the most fascinating parts of the whole process. Think of tempering like teaching thousands of tiny chocolate crystals to line up perfectly. If they don't, your bunny's not going to have that satisfying snap when you bite into it, and it definitely won't have that beautiful shine that we all love. The tempering process is like a carefully choreographed dance with temperature. First, they completely melt all the crystals, and then it's cooled down just enough to start forming new ones, but not all at once. Finally, they hold it at the perfect working temperature where these crystals can develop properly. The machines doing this work are incredible, monitoring temperatures down to a tenth of a degree. Now that we have perfectly tempered chocolate, it's time to start making actual bunnies. These molds might look simple, but they're actually high-tech pieces of engineering. Each one created using precision machinery, polished to perfection, and coated with a special treatment that helps release the chocolate at just the right time. Now, let me show you how they make hollow bunnies. It's not what you might expect. Now, first, they actually heat the molds up to 85 degrees. I know what you're thinking. Why heat them when we want the chocolate to cool? Well, if the mold is to cool, the chocolate is going to set too quickly, and you're going to end up with uneven thickness and a spotty surface. No one wants that. Now, the really cool part is what happens next. Watch this. The machine is depositing exactly the right amount of chocolate into each mold, but that's just the beginning. See the vibrating tables? They're shaking at specific frequencies to remove any air bubbles and ensure the chocolate coats every tiny detail of the mold. But here's where it gets really interesting. The molds don't just sit there, they're about to do some acrobatics. First, they flip 180 degrees, and then they start a continuous rotation that would make a gymnast proud. They're actually programmed to pause at certain angles, letting the chocolate create that perfect hollow shell that we all know and love. Now comes one of my favorite parts in the whole process, the cooking tunnel. Now, this isn't just any old refrigerator. This is a precise piece of engineering that would make a meteorologist jealous. Now, let me walk you through what's happening here. See how the tunnel has different zones? Well, that's because shocking the chocolate with sudden cold temperatures would be a disaster. Instead, they ease it in, like getting into a cold tub gradually instead of just jumping in. Now, the first zone sits at a comfortable 65 degrees, just cool enough to start the setting process. Then our chocolate bunnies move into the main cooling zone, where the temperature drops to 55. Now, this is where the magic happens, where all those crystal structures created during tempering really lock into place. But here's something that might surprise you. Humidity, well, that plays a big role too. Too much moisture in the air and you get those weird white spots on your chocolate. Too dry and the bunny might crack. The factory maintains this perfect balance between 45 and 55% humidity. It's like a day spa for chocolate. 
Now, once the bunnies are perfectly cooled, they're ready for their glamour shots. This is where art meets engineering, and every manufacturer has their own special touches. Hey, check this out. For the basic designs, they use these incredible automated systems that can decorate hundreds of bunnies per hour. But for those premium chocolate bunnies, the ones that make you feel a little guilty about eating them, those get the white glove treatment. Watch how these skilled decorators use special cocoa butter colors to hand paint details. Some of them have been doing this for decades and the precision is absolutely incredible. Now, see how they're adding those tiny little eyes? Yeah, each decorator has their own signature style, making every bunny a little bit unique. And here's something cool. Some manufacturers use edible metallic dust to give their bunnies a subtle shimmer. It's like makeup for chocolate, but unlike makeup, every single one of these decorative elements has to pass strict food safety standards. Now our bunnies are almost ready to hop into your Easter basket, but they need protection for the journey. This is where the packaging process comes in, and it's way more high-tech than you might think. Now watch these machines wrap each bunny in foil with incredible precision. It's like watching a master gift wrapper at work, except this wrapper never gets a paper cut. The foil isn't just for looks, though. It's a perfect suit of armor that protects your bunny from temperature changes, light, and even picking up other flavors during shipping. But the protection doesn't stop there. See these special inserts they're adding to the boxes? They're designed to cradle each bunny perfectly, preventing any damage during shipping. Because let's be honest, nobody wants to open their Easter chocolate and find a bunny that looks like it had a rough night. Now, the really fascinating part is how they monitor the temperature during shipping. These boxes are packed in special containers with temperature indicators. If the chocolate gets too warm during transit, the indicators will show it, and that batch, well, it won't make it to stores. Talk about quality control. Now, you know what's really interesting, though, about chocolate bunnies? The psychology behind why we love them so much. Scientists actually looked into this. They found that the way a chocolate bunny looks dramatically affects how we think it tastes. Now, think about it. When you see a perfectly molded chocolate bunny with those cute little details, doesn't it just seem like it's going to taste better than a plain old chocolate bar? Well, that's your brain playing tricks on you, but in the best possible way. And let's talk about that age-old question. How do you eat yours? Studies show that a whopping 76% of people go for the ears first, myself included. Now, it's such a universal experience that researchers have actually published papers about it. Now, they think it might have something to do with reducing the guilt of destroying something cute by going for the quickest, most humane approach, if you can think of it that way. I mean, who goes tail first? I guess 24% of people do. Well, speaking of fascinating facts, let me blow your mind with a couple of numbers. Every Easter season, Americans buy enough chocolate bunnies to fill more than 86 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Just imagine diving into that. Mm. And remember that world record holder I talked about earlier? Well, that 4,800-pound chocolate bunny used enough chocolate to make 32,000 regular-sized bunnies. The team who built it had to use specialized refrigeration systems just to keep it from melting under the display lights. So the next time you're unwrapping one of these nostalgic treats, maybe this Easter even, take a moment to appreciate all of the science, engineering, and artistry that went into creating it. Now, I'm curious, what surprised you the most about this process? Was it the precision temperature control, the hand-decorated details, or the psychology about why we eat the ears first? Well, drop a comment below and let me know. And if you enjoyed this behind-the-scenes look at how things are made, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more fascinating factory tours. We'll see you in the next video.